Yay, another painting video. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. And uh, today I am how to paint Dante, really. That's, it says it in the, in the title. Um, all it is, so this video is just, I needed a break from the Tyranids. I was hoping to have an update on the Tyranids, but I've been, I've got so many on the go at once, I'm not actually getting anything finished, which is kind of frustrating, but for some reason that's just how my brain works. I keep bouncing around. So, I needed a bit of a palette cleanser, and Dante's been sat on my shelf since he came out way back in April, and I thought, well, let's let's do Dante, and then I thought, well, let's make a video out of it, because I've enjoyed doing the last couple of videos, um, mostly about, well, all about Tyranids, really, and how I paint them, so I thought, can I do a how I paint Dante? Now, just a disclaimer, the reason I call it how I paint is because I'm not aiming it as a full-on tutorial, uh, even though it does sound a bit at the start. Uh, the idea really is just to A, motivate me to paint something and B, just share how I paint it so people might find it useful, they might not. So if they don't, that's fine with me. If they do, that's even better though and uh, I'd love to hear about it if you do. So without further ado, let's just get into it and stop me waffling on. Here we go. Okay, so we want to start off by building our model of course. So, once you've got your model all built, build it in two parts, I would say. So what I've done here is I have actually blue tacked the backpack, or the jump pack, onto him. So I can easily remove it. So, as I said, he's been sat on my shelf now for God knows how long, months. Um, so I think I've used some really horrible old blue tack though. So, as long as you use new blue tack, you shouldn't have too much of an issue like I'm having getting rid of it. Uh, but yeah, just be careful. Um, but yeah, just blue tack it on. And then what you can do is use that blue tack to then attach it to uh, an old paintbrush or something else you've got lying around. Basically something that you can hold. So you can spray it and then you can use it to uh, hold it and whilst you paint it. So I have a an old paintbrush to hand, which I'm just going to use for this. And I'm just going to attach it with the blue tack, get it sprayed up, and then we're going to use that going forward to paint it all. And the undercoat of choice for today is going to be Mechanicus Standard Grey. So today we'll be using grey. Hey. Cool, and there he is, all undercoated in grey. So where we're going to start today is we're going to start with the armor, as that is the majority of him. It's going to be in gold, so what we're going to do is just base it a nice gold and that gold is going to be from scale 75 it's called necro gold metal and alchemy range uh, i picked this up on a whim just because i'm not i like the games workshop ones but i want something a bit darker i wanted to go a bit darker with my gold i quite like it dingy so i want to try this out and i haven't looked back since and the brush i'm going to be using is if i can get it to focus it's actually a large base brush from citadel so i'm just going to take some uh pop it onto a wet palette and we're just going to apply to a lot of the big areas to start with just get the majority of it covered and then what i intend to do is just switch to a smaller brush and obviously just go into a bit more of the detailed areas so you can do it however you feel at home um but yeah just basically cover all of his armor in gold that's what we're looking for it doesn't matter if it goes everywhere else it's uh, we're gonna tidy it up later so just get that gold on there um, have some fun with it and uh, yeah we'll move on to the next step our next step then once the gold is all dry is we're going to wash it so I'm gonna grab Agrax Earthshade and just give it an all-over wash I'm going to grab a medium shade brush from Citadel and all I'm going to do is take my Agrax literally just straight out of the pot and I'm just going to slap it all on to this gold and get it all covered all over as much as is needed really just uh, yeah just cover it nicely really and then uh, we'll come back and we'll just sort of pick up any pooling uh, as you can see sort of in the corner of his foot there I'll come around and grab that in a second uh, and then yeah just go crazy I guess yay oh 
Okay, okay. So we've got some pool in. So what I'm gonna do is just clean my brush, dry it off a little bit, and then I'm just gonna dab it into any areas where it looks like it's pooling. So kind of just on that bit of the mask there, just in his neck there. Just shake the camera a little bit for you. Um, and just have a look around the model. Uh, so I think we had it on the foot and the corner. Oh yeah, shoulder pads are always a good one for it. So just take your brush, like I say, just dab it on. It should soak up some of that excess wash if you've got any sat around. So whilst it's drying, just quickly go around with your brush and just soak up any of that excess that's not really needed. And of course, whilst we are doing all of this to Dante, you should also be doing this with the jump pack as well, uh, because all these methods are just gonna go across both parts of the model. We're just painting it separately, aren't we? So of course, yep, cover it in gold, wash it in the Agrax. And then again, if you have any pooling like you did on Dante, just sort of go around afterwards and just tidy up a little bit. And then we'll let it all dry and we'll move on to the next bit. Cool, and there he is all dried up. So we've been over the gold, we've been over with the Agrax Earthshade, and I've just tidied up all the pool in and just let it dry. So we'll move on to the next stage, part, thing, paint, something. We're going to the next bit. And our next bit is just to paint all the soft black areas. So this is like his belt and in between the armor and everything. So for this, we're gonna use Corvus Black. Cool, so like I said, all this is gonna be is for most of the well I well, I personally consider the softer areas. I would I in my head I've presumed that, you know, these bits in between all the armor joints uh, are softer, aren't they really? Because you know, it uh, it's for the movement and stuff. So what we're gonna do is uh, without rambling on too much is just go between all the armor joints. So you've got obviously the bit under his bum, you got in between the knees. We're gonna do the uh, the tabard uh, in between his legs. So the back of it, we're just gonna do black. So we're just gonna cover only the back of it. So that's gonna be done. Obviously you've got bits in between the arms, so the elbow joints, etc., And uh, even the little bits sort of running across the his back there. That uh, basically is little straps that attach his jump pack to him. Uh, we'll do them as well. And not to forget as well, I mentioned uh, just with the paint bit that we're going to do his belt. He's got a belt on. I was thinking about brown, but we got the black out. Let's do it all black. Let's uh, get that covered in black as well. So any any soft areas essentially that you think might, you know, be black, uh, be softer, just paint them black. We won't do the guns or anything like that right now. So his pistol or any part of his axe, we're going to do them a, a darker black later on. So don't worry too much about them. Just get all these bits painted and then we'll uh, we'll move on. Here's just a quick look at the, uh, all the black bits done. So I've done the little bits on the back, like I said, for the jump pack, then the back of his tabard, got in between the uh, knees, although that could probably do with another coat actually. Um, so obviously just do one or two coats until you've got them quite solid. I've managed to sort of get into his neck area, what I can get there. Um, obviously back of the tabard, back of the knees, I'm missing another bit there. Um, so this is just a, yeah apparently it's just a, this is a good time to just go around and make sure you've not missed anything because I clearly have so I'll tidy all this up and uh, yeah well that's it really we'll just go on to the next bit after this then so just uh, double check top up any bits that you need to maybe add another layer try not to get it all over the armor like I just did and uh, yeah then we'll go on to our next stage what I'm going to do next then is I'm going to base all of the red areas that I want uh, with Mephiston Red. And all these areas are basically going to be his tabard and his little, um, I'm going to paint his bandana, I guess, a little bit attached to his uh, crown, his, um, oh, what, iron halo is it? I forgot, yeah, is that the right word? Maybe. 
I could probably re-record this and find out, but I'm not going to. Um, so yeah, this bit here, I'm going to get this all red. I was thinking about doing it a um, Zandri dust kind of for the, what we're going to do later with the rest of it, but I thought it'd break it up a bit nicer. So we'll have this red as well on mine and the front of his tabard. Um, we're not going to do any of the blood drops yet, so don't worry too much about them. I'm going to do them right at the end, basically. So once we've got everything else done, I'll come back and do all the gems. There we are for all the red. So I forgot to mention as well this shoulder pad. So it's drying at the moment. Um, so I'm just quickly filming this as it's drying, just to sort of let you know. Uh, I'm going to have to make another pass or two, I think, at it, just to get a real solid red on that. Because as you can see, it's a bit thin and watery at the moment. Um, so once that's all done, uh, same with you guys if you're following this, just let it dry, do another pass until it's solid. Okay, the next part I'm going to jump into then is I'm going to base all the white areas. So these will be like all the wings and stuff. So I'm going to grab a grey seer and we're going to base it all. So all we're going to do is pick out all of the wings on him. So this will start with this chest piece. So what I'll do is I'm not going to go through and paint it all solidly now. Um, I'll go through and do that off camera, but I'll just slowly pick out the pieces that we're going to do white eventually. So we've got his chest piece, we've got these little bits on the side of his legs as well. So we do the, the wings and the skull. Um, so you want to get a nice solid colour on this, because then we're going to wash it afterwards. Uh, so another piece actually is on his belt here. Um, so sort of his waist area, it's like a cool ass belt buckle holding that tabard on. Uh, so get all of that area as well um, and I believe I think the only other area for now we're gonna do is just um, on the shoulder pad as well so get all the wings here um, and then we'll come back and wash it later like I said don't worry too much there's a little bit on the gun what I want to do is I'm gonna do that later because we're gonna sort of base the gun in a black do the metal and then we'll sort of add the white onto it afterwards I mean you're more than welcome to do it now if you want and then we'll go around it later but uh, the way I'm gonna do it is I'll come back to that in a bit and here we have it so I've just gone around I've done one or two passes at it I've got to mention top of his axe as well uh, I did that bit as well so we've got the two bits on the legs his shoulder pads this chest piece the bit on his waist and uh, yeah, don't forget about this part on the axe as well. So you might need one or two passes with it, but get a nice solid color on it. And then we can move on to the next bit. And I forgot again to add in the fact that we are doing the, the jump pack as well. Um, so yeah, quick, quick jump to the jump pack. Hey, uh, we've got some wings on here as well. So with the gray seer, obviously just cover these wings and bits again don't worry too much about the blood drops we'll do them right at the end because we're going to attempt to do the gemstone effect on them uh, so we'll leave that till last so just get the wings uh, so we've got these wings on either side of the jump pack and then we've got the um, so where those uh, flaps are I guess they've got two little wings on there as well so what you want to do is also just cover them in grey seer and same like I said just get a nice solid color on it that's all And grab your Zandri dust next then. We're gonna do some of these parchment, papery, flappy, thingy bitsies. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes, you know what I mean. Let's go. Okay, so as I alluded to, I have no idea what I'm calling this part, but it's the bits attached to his uh, purity seal. So is it all just a purity seal or is the wax bit just a purity seal? Oh, actually, I don't know. Um, so the little parchments, the paper, the cloth that hangs from it, um, we're just going to do these bits as you can probably see so in one or two passes you might need to do just to get a nice solid color and also the little bit hanging from his pistol we're going to just cover that as well and get a nice base color on that and I nearly forgot to say there's also this part on his shoulder pad so get a nice strong coat of Xandri dust on here as well Okay, so hopefully I'm right with this and saying it's uh, a laurel wreath around his head, possibly, but the bit that's going to be green anyway, I'm going to use Lupercal Green to base this. 
Okay, so with the looper cow green, this is going to be the wreath. I think it is anyway. Uh, so all I'm going to do is make one or two passes with this until, again, as usual, just get a nice solid color on it. Uh, feel free to use any dark green. Uh, I'm just using this because I think this is the nicest dark green I've got at the moment. Uh, so it was all I had to hand. And uh, sometimes when I'm painting, I panic and just grab what I've got to try and use. And this is what I came up with. So I'm hoping it works out. So fingers crossed. Cool. So the next stage I'm going to is I'm going to paint some of the armor in a darker black. And I'm going to be using Black Legion. So the parts of this I'm going to be doing is we're going to be painting his gun. So I'm going to cover the entire thing in black and, and we'll do the silver afterwards. But it's just a, a precaution just to make sure that, you know, if we miss any bits of the silver, everything at least has a base coat of black and not gray. So all of the weapons, all of the guns are going to be black. Uh, I'm going to paint this part in the middle of the axe just above the, uh, the pommel bit, the handle and sort of behind the uh or underneath the, the blade itself um so i'm going to paint that and the cable black uh now i'm thinking about it actually i suppose i should have done the cable in the corvus black maybe because i guess you know it would be a softer material but here i am just painting it with black legion um so if you are following along feel free to change it up to you guys uh this is just me going through the motion as my brain works so it's all over the place so I'm quite back and forth and I do apologize so sometimes I realize I may have missed things speaking of missing things we will swing back around and get it but if you are following this as you go um, which I'm not sure anybody really will but if you, know, you know there's that one person um, the shoulder trim so the trim on the shoulder pads is actually going to be black and I do forget about this and I have to swing back around later and get it so if you are doing Black Legion now or anything like that, obviously grab the shrimp, the trim of the shoulder pads now so you don't have to do it later because I have to come back to it. So speaking of missing things, um, I only just caught this as I was doing the axe. I've missed the handle of the axe. So I actually want the top and bottom of the handle to be in gold. So I could have done this earlier if I had remembered. Um, clearly I forgot as I do. Uh, you'll start to notice a pattern here of me forgetting things and having to jump back and forth. So I do apologize, but yes, I'm going to do the handle of the axe gold. And also, I'm just going to quickly top up this um, blood droplet, which I can do later in the top up stage. But I've also just noticed this as I was doing it. So I thought I'd just apply the gold around it and then get more gold on the red. So I'm going to have to tidy that up again but you're starting to see the cracks in my painting methods. It's just a bit erratic sometimes. Anywho, let's just get on with it and move on to the next stage. That next stage is gonna be the rest of the handle on the ax. So I'm gonna base this in the fang. Okay, okay, this is pretty straightforward. It's just the rest of the handle. I'm basing it in the fang. Uh, wash it in a bit. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, we didn't. Cool, we're nearly there with all of the base colors. So we're going to do some of the silver parts. I, I am grabbing Iron Hand Steel. Cool, so for Dante himself then, what we're gonna do with the silver is we're gonna do the axe blade, the the power the power pack part of the axe, and top of the axe, we've got his grenades that are sat on his belt. So we're gonna just cover all of them in silver for now. Uh, and then we'll move on to his gun as well. So for the gun, we've got the barrel. And we've got sort of a little bit at the back. We've got a little bit underneath. Like, is it a power? Is it a power pack underneath? What's that little bit underneath? This bit here. Um, whatever that part is as well. I'm going to put that in silver. And then I'm just going to go around and just pick out all the bits I want. The 
well, all the bits on the gun that I want to be silver, basically. So there's the barrel, the little power pack, a little bit at the back and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to try and do it as neatly as possible. Never works out, so I'll have to tidy this up a bit, but it's fine. Don't forget as well for the silver, there's uh, these little bits here. So he's got like a little cable running to the mask. So he's got that side. And then on the flip side, you've also got, uh, there's a little bit here to do silver. I'm not actually sure what these are. Are these like clasps or something? Actually, do you know what? I've never known what they are. Um, anyway, without trying to work out what everything is, I guess, just, I know it wants to be silver. For the backpack, uh, we're going to do uh, the, the boot, the thrusters, and he said boosters, they're not boosters, are they? I suppose they're thrusters. The, um, so these bits, the thrusters, yeah, let's go with thrusters. So we're going to do the edges and the inside of them silver. Uh, I've also got to do the uh, little parts uh, sticking out of the backpack, the little, um, are they little air vents? Um, again, I'm learning. Well, I'm not learning anything. I'm just realizing how little I know when it comes to the anatomy of Space Marine armor and trying to describe it. So, luckily, I have video, so my video can speak louder than my words. My actions will be speaking louder than my words here. Um, so, we've got that, those bits, as you can see, and then also I'm going to do this entire sort of like ball joint, I guess is the best way to describe it this sort of ball joint booster uh, a silver as well oh and don't forget the little air vents as well on this side so both these little air vents and this little cable that's uh, sort of running in the middle we're just going to uh, slap some uh, silver all over these parts as well It's just a quick look at where we're at now. So uh, I've just applied all the silver to the gun and this little bit here, this little bit holding the the parchment papery bit. Um, obviously we've done, went through it. So we've done the, uh, the grenades, little parts on the mask, covered the entire axe parts. We'll come back and do some highlights on that later. Uh, and then yeah, the little bits on the mask as well. So that's all I've done for the silver parts for now. And for the jump pack, this is what it should look like. So we've done those air vents. I've got the silver all over the gold, of course. Uh, we've done these little bits at the bottom here. We've done the, the thruster parts and these bits as well, like I was saying. As you can kind of see those sort of ball jointy bits. Uh, I've covered them all in silver. So that's it. That's how it should look. That's how I'm going with it. Cool. Let's carry on. Well, carrying on to our last little bit then is the little purity seal so i'm going to give it a couple of coats of warpstone glow so with my warpstone glow i'm just going to apply one or two layers depending on how many i need because it's a bit of a thin paint so i'm just going to completely cover this purity seal in green i know purity seals are normally red but uh for a long time now just to sort of break up the red of my blood angels i've always done them um, a shade of green and I thought it'd be fitting for Dante to have the same. Um, I could have done it red, but I'm doing it green. And just a quick little bit. This is what I alluded to earlier. I forgot and completely missed the fact that I wanted the shoulder trim to be black. So when I had the Black Legion out earlier, I should have done this, uh, but I completely missed it. So I've just realized now, before we go on to washing everything, uh, I'm just gonna do, make a couple of passes and get uh, build up a solid color of the black on the shoulder trim on both shoulders. And uh, yeah, let that dry, and then we're almost done with all of the basing. Oh my god, I missed another bit, didn't I? I think I mentioned this earlier as well. I did actually say I was leaving this till the last part, so I've not really missed it. Um, I'm just dropping this in right at the end. I'm only saying I've missed it because I thought when I missed the Black Legion part and the shoulder trim, I'd miss this. But I haven't, this was intentional. So I wanted to do all of the black and silver first and then come back and put the gray sear on. So all I'm doing is just painting the uh, the wings on his pistol, that's all I'm doing. So same as we did earlier, just add in a couple of layers until I've got a solid uh, gray sear base coat on both sides of his pistol where the wings are, that's all really. Oh, 
Awesome. Right. So that should be all of our base colors done. So before we move into washing everything, uh, this is where I would normally just sort of take a moment to just go around the model and just do a tidy up stage because I'm not the tidiest of painters and I do tend to get paint on places like, I mean, I need to tidy up these wings because they look like splodges. I just need to run some back black around them and uh, just sort of tidy it up, give it a bit more shape from where the gray sears run. You know, I've got black on the gold here. Um, I've just got bits all over the place. So I've got some red on the gold as well. So this will be my point where I would normally, like I say, just go have a quick look around, tidy up everything. And uh, before I move into getting everything washed and moving into the sort of highlighting step. So here we go then, I'm just gonna go and do that. Right, I'm happy. Well, I think I've got all the base colors down. Not 100% sure, but I think I'm about there. So I'm gonna go into shading now. So I'm gonna grab, grab my Agrax and my non-oil. So we're gonna go with our Agrax first. And the Agrax is basically just gonna be used on all of the red parts and the parchment, uh, the Zandri dust parts. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, not forgetting the, uh, the handle of the axe, uh, not the not the grey bit, the just the gold parts, uh, because I forgot to do them at the beginning when we did all the gold originally. Um, now I think about it actually, I could have probably just waited and done the gold now as well, but um, yes, you live and you learn. Well, you live, you know, I never learn. Um, ignoring that, but uh, just yeah, so do the gold parts, do his red shoulder pad, so you want all of that just done in Zandri Dust, you want to cover the red, cover the Zandri Dust part, I said Zandri Dust, cover it in Agrax, um, and just do all the red and Zandri Dust parts, there we go, I think I got that right, anyway. And just like before, just once you've done that and applied it, grab a dry brush, uh, not an actual dry brush, just dry, dry your brush off. And like we did before, just go around and try and soak up any, uh, some of the pooling, any of the pooling you can find uh, that you don't want to be where it is and tidy it up just a little bit. And then we're going to grab our Nuln Oil. Nuln Oil is going to be used over all the silver bits. Uh, we're going to do it over all the, the soft black parts that we did with the Corpus Black earlier. We're just going to give them a wash. Uh, we're also going to give, well, basically everything else, I think, apart from the, the wings. We're going to do the wings in a second with a, a grey wash. So any silver parts, uh, do the soft black goods. We're going to do the handle of the axe as well. So where we've applied the fang, uh, I'm going to wash that in a black. And also I'm going to wash his uh, laurel wreath in black. And also, oh yeah, don't forget the, uh, the purity seal as well. So I'll go through, I'm just gonna wash all of these parts. And then uh, again, if there was any pooling, I'll go through, get rid of all the pooling, and then uh, let it all dry. And then we'll do the last part of washing. Our very last wash for this stage then before highlighting everything is going to be Soul Blight Grey. Pretty quick and easy this one. It's literally just going to be all of the wings. So everywhere I've put the grey sear on, which is pretty much just wings, uh, it's all just going to be covered uh, and washed in this Soul Blight Grey. Simple as that. Right, so now I've got all my shades on. My next step now is we're going to move into the highlighting, basically, of all the models. So we've got all the base coats down, so I'm going to start by highlighting the red. 
now normally i probably would go for the gold because it's the most and i want to get the armor done but because this little loincloth tucks in between his legs i wanted to get the red done first in case i got red everywhere because like i keep alluding to i'm a messy painter so what I've done is I took the Mephiston red, just gone back over uh, and just obviously left the wash in the recesses and put a nice solid coat of red back on the shoulder. Then I hit it with the Evil Sun Scarlet just to brighten it up a bit and make the majority of the red that colour. And then what I'm going to do is go back through with the Wild Rider. But uh, I'm not going to put too much on. So Wild Rider is basically going to be the edge highlights and the little uh, raised areas on the cloth and on the edges. And then just a line or two on the shoulder pad just to, you know, sort of give it a bit of line, uh, edge highlighting sort of on, you know, the shoulder pad. Um, I think you can kind of see it there. It's uh, my camera and my lighting was a bit off at this take, so I apologise if you can't really see it. But you can just sort of make out the lines that I'm talking about on the shoulder pad. Um, that's just done with the Wild Rider Red. Um, and that's it then for the red. So the red is now done. Let's move on. Moving on to the next part then. So the next part I want to do is I'm going to highlight all of the grey or black areas, should I say, not grey areas. I'm going to highlight with the grey. So my method I am using for this is I'm going to go over all the black areas in the Nesh and Grey first. Um, obviously not in the recesses, just on the edges. So um, all of the bits in between the armour, the um, shoulder pads, uh, basically anything that's black um, is all going to get an ash and grey base highlight, uh, edge highlight. Then for my next move, I'm going to do the Dawnstone. And the Dawnstone will be uh, another sort of highlight. Um, again, on the shoulder pads, it'll mostly be, it'll, well, it'll be all on the edges. So when it comes to doing the bits in between the armour, uh, I'm only going to leave, uh, well, I'm going to use a little bit of Dawnstone. So I'm just going to sort of put it towards the middle of those ridges. Uh, it's not going to cover the entire thing. So it kind of leaves the Eshen grey at the edges and with the black in between. And this, the Dawnstone to highlight it a bit more. With the back of the loincloth, I've done a sort of watered down uh, wash of, well, I say wash, it is. Painted it on. It looks really rough. You can, I know it looks bad, um, but... Uh, it's kind of like uh, the Eshin Grey is just sort of, yeah, I've just highlighted it with Eshin Grey essentially. What I'm going to do is hit it with a black wash later and sort of just try and blend that in a bit and dull it down. So it might look a bit awful at the moment, but I'm hoping I can rectify this. So bear with me. Administratum Grey is the final bit. So that's the right edge highlight. That's just, you know, kind of bringing it out. I'm going to put it mostly on the armor and gun. Uh, I'm not going to put too much on the soft joints in between the legs and the arms and everything. I kind of want to separate them. So in my head, like the, the really bright gray would be on the sort of more solid stuff. That's where I'm going anyway. That's my head cannon. That's how it is. Great. Now we're going to do the white. So I'm going to grab Orthan Gray first and I'm going to apply that over all of the white areas, obviously leaving that light gray, it's all light gray in the recesses and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to take uh, a little bit of skull white and all i'm going to do is run that along the edges and sort of the very tips of the wings and stuff just to give it a bit more oomph when it comes to the white uh, and that's all it is really simple as that so that's all the white taken care of now and let's move on to the zandri dust and parchment areas shall we now I'm just going to grab my Zandri Dust, Ushabti Bone, and my Screaming Skull. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to reapply the Zandri Dust like I did kind of the red, just back over the raised areas, leaving that wash in the recesses. Then I'm going to go over all of that with Ushabti Bone, just to sort of brighten it up a bit, give it a bit more of a highlight. And then with the Screaming Skull, it's literally just going to run the brush along the edges. Um, and just highlight those edges a little bit on everything that's Andrew Dust. Um, and then all I'm going to do after that is I'm going to try and blend it back together because I do struggle with some of this sometimes. Sometimes it clicks and sometimes it doesn't. And today I don't feel like it was clicking. So it can often, it can often look like I have literally painted some parchment. I can't make it look real and it bugs me sometimes. So... What I'm trying to do is I'll thin down some agrax and maybe just do one or two passes and really thin 
shades of Agrax just to try and blend these colors back together. Um, and all it'll do is like hopefully darken them down a little bit, blend them and just make it look a bit more like it is paper and not just painted bone colored stuff on a model really. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, I've done the purity seal. So I've gone back over it with the warpstone glow. And then all I've done is I've taken a moot green and just dotted some highlights around the edges on it. And that does it for all the Zandri dust areas and the purity seal. For the axe handle then, I got the fang and went back over it. And then I did some Thunderhawk blue. And then I did a final highlight of Russ Grey. Uh, I'm not overly pleased with it. Um, it was a real struggle to try and get the highlights on the top and bottom of each of those parts of the axe handle. Uh, and what I had to do was, in the end, basically just attempt it. And then if I put too much on, just run the fang, try and run it through the middle to just sort of separate the two lines on the top and bottom of each part. Um, I'm still not happy with it, and I don't think the Thunderhawk Blue added much, so I probably could miss that part, but I gave it a go anyway. And for the Laurel Wreath then, I just kind of, I went back over it, similar time I've been doing everything, back over it with the initial colour which was the Lupercal Green, uh, and then I highlighted it first off with a Sons of Horus Green, and then I actually mixed uh, Cyberite Green and Sons of Horus Green together, uh, just to give it a final highlight of a sort of brighter green because I didn't actually know what green from the Citadel range to use so I just tried to make one up so I just wanted to add something a bit greenier and lighter to it and I don't know I'm kind of happy with it I think it's worked anyway and we have made it to the gold then so this is how I'm doing my gold and when you see this pot you might think what the hell is that is that a citadel one with the thing removed and it sort of is what I've got here is a 50 50 mix of Stormhost silver and retributor armor um, somebody once told me if you mix these two together you get a um, it's almost like a liberator gold but it's a bit uh, more consistent it's a better consistency uh, I suppose that's is that the way anyway what it is is it just it applies better so um what I did was I started off highlighting with this and as I do tend to do with my painting I've noticed I get a bit carried away so where I was just going to highlight my nice dark gold that I wanted I ended up kind of covering most of the model in this gold and I'm kind of happy with it, actually. It's, I think it's turned out all right. Um, I'm not displeased. I wanted the dark gold, but upon reflection now, I've gone and done it. One, I can't be bothered to go back and sort it all out. So in that respect, I have to live with it. Two, I actually do think it looks all right. So I am happy with the gold and the outcome. Um, and what I did again is I did attempt to thin down some Agrax and just sort of go over some of the recessed areas and the bits in between. So where I've got those dark areas in between all of the parts, you know, just sort of run it, try and blend it a bit together. I don't know if it's really worked, but uh, I wanted to give it a go and see what will happen anyway. Um, and same again for the jump pack. It's been a while since we've seen the jump pack. I keep forgetting to show this part. But here it is. Um, so all I've done is just the same. I mean, it's what's there to say, really. I've done the same thing to the jump pack because I've done to everything else. That's it. After all the gold then, I went and finally did all the silver. So all I did was go back over it with the Iron Hand Steel. And then I took some Stormhost Silver. And I did start by kind of mixing the two together. And then going over most of the raised areas and then trying to apply a really sort of thin uh, layer of Stormhost Silver around the edges. So this mainly goes um, on the axe uh, blade, sort of running along the edges of the axe blade and sort of down the lines of the blade itself. Um, and then again, just sort of around the edges of the uh, this jump pack, so sort of the, 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 the boosters bits and stuff like that. But mostly I just tidied it up with the iron hand steel to leave the recessed areas shaded. So I've done a lot here. I say a lot, maybe it looks like a lot, it's probably not a lot. Uh, I've done the base. So I've took a grey sear and I've just uh, applied a few coats to get a really solid coat of that underneath him on that little plinthy rocky thingy masonry bit he stood on. 
Uh, Zanzandri dust mixed with, so Armageddon dunes and dust, whatever I had lying around, what's left, because they're both drying out, I've used for the basing, and then Zandri dusted around the bits that were actually part of the model to blend it in. Uh, Evil Sun Scarlet over that helmet, because he's a fallen brother, um, and uh, Dante's avenging him. I've also painted all the blood drops uh, that are going to be gems. I've done them black uh, to do the gem effect in a second. Uh, there's a little bit on the grenades as well as part of his belt. So I've gone over that with the black and re-highlighted that to get that to match in the belt. And I've applied a thin layer of Angrax Earthshade just to the barrel of his gun at the end, which I'm mount. I will dry brush in a second and give it sort of like a, a burny effect because, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I roll. So I'm going to jump into that and do that now. Okay, so the next stage is I have now washed everything. Uh, I say everything, just the base, um, and then I've done some other stuff. But for the base, I have added a non-oil to all the grey seer, and I have done an Agrax Earthshade wash over all of the Zandri dust and the other base part, including the helmet. Uh, and then I've been through, I've dry brushed the tip of the gun with Rhinox Hide. So all I did was get some Rhinox Hide, just did a light dry brush around the edge of it um, on the tip and sort of up the side of the barrel. Um, I have also done red. So I've took the corn red and I have applied it to all the gemstones um, as a base and left most of the black. Uh, and oh yeah, for the eyes, I have got Waywatcher Green Glaze still left over from a long time ago, I believe. I don't think Citadel do this anymore. And what I've done is I've just dropped that in because I feel like it over the white. It's kind of like an early contrast paint, I suppose, actually. It, um, yeah, it sort of just goes over the white quite nicely. It gives it like a glowy and green effect whilst leaving some of the white showing. And I'm quite happy for that when it comes to some of my lenses. Um, here's just a quick example of the dry brushing of the brown over the um, thrusters of the jump pack. I keep saying boosters and thrusters and jumping back and forth. I don't know which one to choose. Uh, so yeah, that's that stage done. I'm going to move on to the next stage. Okay now, so I've completed the base. And to complete the base, I have gone through and I've dry brushed it with Andrew Dust first. Then I did a dry brush of Shabti Bone, Uvu Shabti Bone, if I can say it right. And then for the um, the grey, I just went back over it with grey sear to highlight it. Um, and as you can see, I've also been over the gun barrel. So we did a, a dry brush of Rhinox Hide halfway up the barrel. And then I've done a bit of Abaddon Black at the end. And it just gives it, for me anyway, I think it does, it gives it like a little burnt effect really. Um, I've never tried those other ones I've seen people do with all the purples and blues. It is something I might give a go a one day, but for now, this is how I sort of do my melter guns. Um, I've also painted the Blood Angel's helmet down at the bottom. And uh, as for the gemstones, I've been through. So I've added uh, Evil Sun Scarlet over the Corn Red. And then Fire Dragon Bright uh, as just like a little line basically right in the sort of corner of it um i say corner it's well yeah, you know the bottom right of the blood drop sort of thing over, over right over the red and then a little dash of white just a little spot of white uh just to make it look like it is shining and of course i've done the same with the jump pack so we've done a dry brush of brown rhinox hide and then i've just done like a light black over the brown just to make it look like it's um, been scorched a little bit. And uh, yeah, so same with the blood drops as well. I've done the blood drop here and I've just um, not, oh. oh no, wait, no, I've not finished that one. I need to go back and do those two. So I've not done two side ones, but that central one is the same. And then just to finish it off, all I'm gonna do is take Ard Coat uh, from Citadel and just apply it. It's just basically a gloss finish, essentially. And for the gemstones, which are meant to obviously, you know, shine, um, I've done a really, well, I don't know. I, I think it is effective. It is a basic way of doing this. There are better ways, obviously, you can paint these things, but uh, that's the way I've done it. And then I'm gonna add this on top and it just will make it shine. So it'll gloss it all, essentially. And uh, yeah, that's it then for the gemstones, really.
Right, so this very last bit, I just wanted to try and make it look like part of the power axe was glowing. So I thought about using contrast, but I didn't have any that were light enough to hand. So what I've attempted to do is take Baharoth blue, uh, really water it down, and then just drop it over those, uh, well, they, are they power conduits or cables or something that makes it a power rack, isn't it? So where the energy normally runs. You see people do the really, really good uh, paint schemes with all the, the lightning effects and everything coming out. Um, I've never learned to do that and I wish I had, but I'd need more time to learn that technique. And so I try to keep it simple um, and still sort of effective. So I'm going to see how this goes and how this dries. Uh, if it's shit, I'll get rid of it, but I just wanted to try it, see if I can make it look like it's glowing. I mean, I think it's slightly working. Uh, I might have to make another pass at it, but I'll see how it goes. You've got to try these things sometimes, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, it could work. Hmm. And this is the end result. Uh, so all I did afterwards was I added some white to the Baharoth blue and went back over the bits on the axe So the blue kind of sits around them and then the raised areas I added the lighter blue to to make it look a bit more glowy. I think it's worked uh, it's ha I'm happy with it for now. I also grabbed some dried bark and I tried to add some lines to the Zandri dust areas just to make it look like text uh, and I also tried to write Dante on his shoulder pad and in like gothic scripture and I think it you can kind of tell it says Dante it's it's not the greatest but it'll do um, I'm happy with it you know it's like say if you had more time you could spend forever on the miniature couldn't you learning new skills and all of that I haven't got all the time in the world unfortunately so I do the best of my abilities and then I sort of put him in a cabinet on display and then I'll probably use him in a game at some point that's I'm happy with that Anywho, if you enjoyed this, I'm glad. I'm happy to hear. Please let me know. Like it, comment, say something. If you've got any tips for me, actually, yeah, feel free to drop them in. Uh, and hopefully, you know, you'll all come back. I'll um, keep doing some painting videos if, you know, people enjoy them. Um, but also, I'll sort of jump between my other hobbies as that's what the channel's for. So hopefully you'll find something you enjoy here anyway. But thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon. Bye. Bye.